Um, you don't need anything brighter. I still like the 35 degree. I don't think um, you necessarily need to go any wider or anything. Keep in mind when you go wider, you lose some light. Um, when you go sharper, um, it tends to be a little bit brighter. The 35 degree lamp will serve most applications um, if you do it right. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. If I'm looking at this, I mean, I think you're on the right track. I mean, the first thing I would do, I would definitely try and highlight all these pillars. I, I wouldn't worry too much about the beam angle. You can get something um, a little bit narrower, but I'll show you why I don't always like doing that because then what happens, um, and here's an example, is, you know, as you're highlighting that, if the beam angle is too sharp, you, sharp um, the pillar is going to stand out more, but you also get more of a hot spot here. I like sticking with the 35 degree angles because then what it does is it spreads more light up top, and especially because you have multiple pillars like that. Um, it does a really nice job of kind of lighting um, the eaves and the soffit and stuff. It is almost like you have pot lighting. So I think I would probably just stick with the 35 uh, and I would stick with the RS. The reason I like the RS um, and we use it as opposed to the NP, the NP, uh, it's a great light. It is an integrated fixture, uh, whereas the RS is um, something that comes with a bulb. So these already come with the uh, 4 watt, um, 35 degree lamp in them, uh, which is perfect for the application you're talking about. The MP is an actual chipboard that's in there. So um, the thing about that is now you have to order the right, um, you have to write, order the right angle and all that kind of stuff. And if it doesn't look right, well, then you got to replace the fixture. You can't just swap out a bulb. That's why we, we love the RS one. And for the extra amount you pay, um, that's probably the biggest reason we stick with these is because bang for your buck. I don't think that there is a better value light out there. There is cheaper ones, but when you feel these suckers, and feel how well built they are and it gives you the option to drop in all kinds of different lenses and that kind of or uh, not lenses but bulbs uh, as well as lenses and that kind of stuff um, it's just it's such a versatile light for what you pay so that's why we use that as opposed to the NP yes the integrated fixtures are supposed to last longer um, but even if it lasts you know 15 years longer when that burns out you got to go and replace that fixture or you got to try and replace the board which i'll tell you is is more than a pain in the butt and you got to find that board whereas these guys even if this burns out in you know seven to ten years well you just have to go replace the bulb you don't have to worry about all that other stuff um and the other reason i like this too is as your landscape grows you might want to use brighter lights and so on and so forth um, it's not going to matter as much in your case because it's you know it's just the house um so obviously the house isn't going to grow um, but that's another reason I like that is because then as your landscape grows, you can just go put brighter lights in those. So uh, bang for your buck by far. Uh, I think it's the best light out there. So I would have uh, six of those. I would have them across all the pillars. Even if um, this tree is um, in front of this one, I would still do that because as you're looking at it from different angles and stuff, you're going to notice that pillar lit up. It's still going to light up the top um, soffit area and it's going to create that consistency. So I still would do that. Um, with that standard light and then i would try and get an accent light on this side too so another one of those up lights um, you don't need anything brighter i still like the 35 degree i don't think um, you necessarily need to go any wider or anything keep in mind when you go wider you lose some light um, when you go sharper um, it tends to be a little bit brighter the 35 degree lamp will serve most applications um, if you do it right the nice thing is with any of the kits that you order from us they come with um, something called an insta light um, so it's basically this little battery pack that you can actually go and plug those lights into and then you can just uh, stick it in the ground in front of those pillars and see exactly where you want it same thing with that tree you can go and play with it before you go and wire anything so it's a really really good tool um, to go and, and get the right look but that's what I would do there along this side of the house I would probably again um, throw a couple accent lights I think what I would do is with that 35 degree I would probably try and have one 
over here this you might bring it back a little bit further so you kind of get a little bit of that spread on both sides of the windows that light the house um, i still like uh, backlighting areas of the house so that it makes the um, landscape in front stand out a little bit more and you get some reflective light back down i would do the same thing over on this side this one um, just to kind of keep it symmetrical i'd probably have it more under the window that's shining up and kind of um, highlighting those shutters i would do the same thing on this side the only thing is that um, this tree and this stuff is covering a lot of the house here um, but again you can play with that when you have that battery pack you can play with it underneath the windows on all three sides or you can do it under the window there and then here you you um, put it there so that's why i love that that insta-light so that's what i would do there and then like you kind of said i think a couple path and garden lights would be a nice fit um, over on this guy here what i would probably do i would probably try and highlight this as well um, but instead of a standard up light i would probably use a wash light um, like this guy so again very similar to an up light it has a drop-in led lamp in there um, that you can put it's a wider angle it's about a 90 degree spread uh, much softer light great for any low-line shrubs so you're not creating hot spots so i'd probably have one on there uh, on this shrub and then I would sprinkle in a couple path lights in between where you have your accent lights so um, depending how much room and stuff you have in front of these you know plants but I would probably try and get one kind of right in here in between this light probably another one over here and then again probably another one kind of over here in between where you have the up lights I would do the same thing on this side maybe one over here one over here and I don't think you necessarily want to have them um, much further down the pathway because you don't want to have path lights sticking out of the grass it just becomes a bit of a uh, maintenance headache and then the last thing I will talk about um, and I think that covers most yeah this is so from this farther out picture this is where I would have a couple up lights um, looks like there's two trees here so I would probably try and light two of these maybe one uh, with just again that standard up light I'd probably try and have one kind of on this side and then over here I might um, throw it more on the driveway side or more on this side um, but again just kind of play with that I think having these lit up um, would be really nice uh, the path lights in between and then I would probably try and get two of those up lights on these top peaks um, and we do that with something called a gutter mount um, it's just this uh, stainless steel bracket that fits in the gutter screws in there all our connections are waterproof so you can leave them right in the gutter um, and typically what we do is I'll just run the wire up um, the downspout somewhere either behind it or right inside it uh, run the wire across mount my light here make my connections in the gutter and have that shining more upright a lot of people get worried it's going to be too much light in the windows and rarely is that the case especially if you have it shining more upright um, and that's a good rule of thumb with any of the up lights you're going to put in your property you almost want to angle them uh, more upright than you actually think um, because sometimes especially you know in this case if you have them shining at the house that's where you create those hot spots um, same thing on the pillars and stuff you get them too close and have them shine uh, if you have them too close you're going to create a hot spot and if you have them too far out shining at the house you're going to create a hot spot that's why that battery packs um, so optimal is because now you can kind of play with it but the good rule of thumb is you almost always want it to be pointed more upright so i would mount one of those there um, you might have to just run the wire uh, top of the roof line here which is fine you're the only one who would ever know it's there and then you mount another light here and it covers those top peaks um, and again just to go back to this example they did it a little bit differently here but you can see how having those top peaks lit out um, lit up really can make everything pop not just on the ground level um, but on that second level so Sorry, Shan, I think I just cut myself off, but hopefully that gives you some pretty good ideas to start with. Um, feel free to uh, go to our website, kind of play around a little bit, especially the next couple of days. Take advantage, uh, especially if you're looking at buying um, a decent amount of lights, um, some of the additional savings we have for the next two days uh, to coincide with Prime Day. Um, and if you have any questions, would like us to customize a kit or anything like that, we can definitely help you there as well. Hey guys, so I just want to show you, uh, we're going to use our accent light a whole bunch in this property. Um, and a lot of uh, common areas we're going to use that is on some nice trees. We've got a really nice tree here that we're going to try and focus on. Um, but one thing I see people do too often or more times than not is instead of trying to get that, tr that light nice and close to the tree and having it shine up so you're taking advantage of all the barking structure and then all the branching up top is they'll bring it far back and try and aim it at the tree. And what happens there is they tend to miss a lot of the lower portions of the trees. And then also when it, um, you know, depending on the area you, you live in, if you start losing a lot of foliage in the winter time, um, then having that light shine at all the foliage is kind of a waste of time and you, you lose 
a lot of the effect of that light. That's why I like having it closer to the tree. You know, here we're, we're maybe 12, 14, 18 inches away from the base. We're gonna have it shooting almost straight up because I wanna highlight all this uh, trunking and branching structure as possible, as well as now we're getting that light up into uh, the foliage and into the canopy. So again, with our standard uh, RS Uplight uh, from FX Luminaire, there's lots of other good ones out there. Uh, I like this guy because it's a, it's a real workhorse and that's what we're gonna use on this project. It's just uh, another cool example. If you can see this top peak here where we used a couple gutter mounts and just focused them in uh, on that top peak, um, really turns out second story peaks. Definitely something you want to focus on if you can get the lights up there. Uh, definitely brings your landscape lighting plan to the next level. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. We're going to show you guys how to light up your landscape with the FX Luminaire RS Uplight. Uh, this is a super durable, really high quality LED light that's great in your landscape. If you need to, say you need to highlight some, some beautiful trees that you have on your property, if you have some nice stone architectural features around your home, this is a great, great light to use. Um, you can change the intensity of the bulb just by using a different lamp. So if you have a small tree that's only maybe 10 to 15 feet high, you can use the standard uh, four watt LED lamp in here. If you're using trees that are maybe 15 to 20 feet high, you can increase that to the five watt LED or if you've got some giant oak trees or some really big trees on your property where you need to push that light at 25 feet or higher, that's where you get into the uh, six watt LED lamps uh, to really push that light out and make those features really, really stand out. Um, this light can be used in a lot of different applications. We use it a lot for perimeter lighting. So if you have trees or shrubs or different bushes and stuff around your property, and you just wanna make your whole property look bigger, it's a great way to go and and highlight those around the perimeter just to make that whole yard stand out. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. We're gonna show you how to light up your landscape with the King Innovation Instalight. So this is a great tool that we use to go and demo different types of lights to find out what light is gonna look best where. So all it is, it's a very simple battery operated pack that just takes eight AA batteries. And then what you can do with it is you can actually go and plug in your light, whatever light it is, whether it be a path light, a wash light, a wall light, or an accent light, you can go and just plug that into your Instalight and you can go walk around your property and test out all the different areas that you're thinking of lighting and seeing which lights look best in which location and where you wanna position those lights to get the best effect that you're looking for. It's a super, super easy tool that comes in all our do-it-yourself kits as well as our try it before you buy it offers where you can go and now test out these lights, feel the quality, see how they're gonna look before you go and make any big decisions on your landscape lighting project. And if you're looking for even more help, you can go and access our free consultation series where you can actually send me pictures of your property and we're gonna go do our best to help you determine which lights to use in the best locations and where to use them. And then you can go test out those practices with the King Innovation Instalight. So go and access that at lightingdoctor.ca and I hope you guys find this tool as valuable as we do. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Instalight, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback and have a great day.